All right. I think we should start now because I see uh, the number of participants uh, is uh, steady right now. Okay, although there's a few people who are still coming in, uh, they can join us uh, in a few. Okay. All right. So good afternoon, everyone, and guten Morgen to our colleagues in Germany. Thank you for joining our webinar session today entitled Future Living. Why invest in sustainable residential real estate in Germany? I'll be your host for today. My name is Nazim. I'm from a JL, KL International Residential Team. We actually have the whole Southeast Asia tuning in. So we have Indonesia, we have from Singapore, we have from Thailand, and we have from Malaysia as well. This is a collaboration between the JL team from Southeast Asia together with our colleagues in JL Germany. So to, do, to introduce our panel for today, first we have Mr. Sarkan Gochman from JLL. He's the Director for Residential Development in International Relations. Hi, Mr. Sarkan. Guten Morgen. Hi. Hi, Nazem. Thank you very much. Hello. And then we have Muriel Sam. She's the Head of Development of Immobile Luxembourg. How's it going? Hello, Nazim. Thank you very much for having me. Nice to have you here. Nice to have you here. And then we have Mr. Osman Nye. He's from OBN for the German Mortgage. Mr. Osman, you want to say hi? Good morning. Hello. Hello. It's morning over here. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's morning in Germany. And last but not least, we have Mr. Volker Mark. He's from VPMK Attorneys. He's a partner for VPMK Legal Services. Hi, Mr. Volker. Hello, Nazim. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Okay, so for the agenda for today, thank you. <laughs> okay, so on to the agenda for today. So there will be three parts to our agenda. Right? So first will be about crisis proof and forward thinking, why Germany is one of Europe's top performers. And they will be talking about our project in one of Europe's highest vertical gardens. And we will have a live Q&A session for how to buy, on how to buy and finance real estate in Germany. Okay. And during our session, we will also be taking questions from our participants. So if you'd like to participate and ask questions, you can see on the bottom of your screen in your WebEx, so there will be a question mark in a box. You can click on that and ask questions. At the end of this webinar, uh, in, in the, in the Q&A session. So without further ado, I would like to leave the floor to Mr. Sarkhan. Well, thank you very much, Nazem, for the introduction and uh, making this organization happen. I'm very, very happy to lead this very interesting panel. And I'm also lucky because I'm representing one of the strongest performers, top performers of Europe, Germany. So in order to have an understanding, let's look at the past performance of Germany. Germany was always a top choice for the investors, according to the Price WC and Urban Land Institute reports in the last 10 years, I would say. We are used to see four cities from Germany in this list. And in 2020, we also saw Berlin, Frankfurt, Munich and Hamburg in top 10. And Frankfurt has always been among the top five of this, but actually we are in crisis, but the good news is we had an excellent start. So I'm gonna be sharing the experiences, what's happening at the moment in the German property market. Germany at the moment is among the top three most resilient economies in the world. According to a new study, which was published in Forbes, this is a very new special case study, and it was positioning number two because of the economy's resilience due to the careful ways in how they are handling to relax the lockdown. And in fact, and in scientific based manner without specifying public health and safety. So also, as you know, or as you might know, um, Germany is the fourth biggest economy in terms of nominal GDP, according to the World Bank. And it's the strongest economy in Europe. It also has one of the best healthcare systems in the world. It is the third biggest uh, medical device provider in the world, and it's the biggest in Germany, according to the World Health Organization. 
It has a very well proven social security system, which is based on protecting their citizens and residents by providing them such services like the short working hour compensations, which works fantastically in the financial crisis. And we are seeing that it's working during the pandemic times as well. It has a considerable financial leeway for the government and the public debt ratio is around 60%, which is lower than the other countries in Europe. So we believe that Germany will come out of the crisis stronger because there is a very strong demand for the condominiums. And there is a fact that there is one and a half million apartments shortage in the market. So it's a demand driven market. Um, the occupancy and the rent defaults are limited by government intervention, which means they are protected. And we've seen a significant um, price increase in the first quarter, although in the first two months there was no pandemic, but we've seen six and a half percent increase in all residential classes, according to the BDP Institute. And we've seen to the hypotech price index, which only counts for the transactions it's executed, that the condominiums even had a price increases up to 13 percent in the big cities. As you might um, know that the home ownership has become even more attractive during these crises, because according to the service GLL intelligence, according to the market intelligence, especially according to Fortis AG service, 52% of the Germans are considering to become homeowners. They're willing more after these crises because they have understood um, how important our homes become in our lives they are sometimes our offices, it's our living spaces, which we have been always using during the lockdown. So these are the benefits in investing in Germany as a frontier country in terms of economy and fighting with the crisis and all manners. But where in Germany to invest is another question. This is, we say Frankfurt, because it's an international hub of Central Europe. It's an international hub for finance, for transportation, for media, and for technology. But we're going to focus on the most strong part of um, the financial capital of Germany, actually, hosting the headquarters of the stock exchange, the European Central Bank, many other financial industry leaders as well. It has an economic strength because it's one of the strongest economy in Europe. It's a preferred location for reallocation of the banks from Brexit and it's hosting numerous international companies, and it's expected to create also 10,000 new potential jobs within the finance sector within the next five years. There's 215 banks in the small city, which consists of 63 local banks, 152 foreign banks, 41 international banks as representative offices. But the very interesting thing is, after the Brexit, 52 new banking licenses have been granted, 20 of them have reallocated themselves, and we're expecting them to move the other ones within this year. It's also headquartering international legal firms, consulting firms, auditing firms, no need to mention JLL headquarters as well. So we see all the big players in the market. Frankfurt's top employers, beside the banks such as Deutsche Bank, Commerzbank, European Central Bank, is also some other companies like Ferrero, the biggest Italian company, Nestle, Kion Group, Allianz Global Investors, the insurance group. We've seen Lufthansa, the airlines, um, GLL, the German stock exchange, telecom systems, and so on. Why we are mentioning about the top employers are because if you invest in the city, probably their employers will be your future tenants. So you will see the Germany map on the left side of the screen. And you can see where Frankfurt is allocated as a booming real estate market. This city can only inhabit at the moment 761,000 people, but in the wider area, it's like 5.6 million people who are also commuting every day, most of them, for business purposes to Frankfurt. Of course, this leads to a very low vacancy rate, which is 0.5%. That means 99.5% of the city is actually booked. So it's either owner occupied or tenant occupied and the 0.5% is for the apartments getting empty and replacing the tenants. But the upside of the city is in the capital appreciations. 
I can say, according to my personal experience in the last five years, I've seen not less than 10% of capital appreciation. And this has been also in 2019 the same. And the maximum I've seen was 17 and a half. The increase in the rental prices are 3%. It's not aggressive as the capital appreciation. The reason is once you go into a house, the tenant doesn't want to leave it because it's very low possibility that they will find a new one. In terms of demand, there's 75,000 apartments missing, but taking into consideration that, um, consideration that the production is only 3,500 per year approximately, um, and the demand is 8,000, I can say that there is an organic growth in this city because it's a demand-driven city. And I would like to show this chart. Maybe um, I have to explain you as well what this means. Um, there's a price, price index which has been monitored by the government. It shows the price increases and fall downs during the period. So this is actually indicating the Christ proof market because it's very stable and it has been started to monitor in 2004. And until now, you might be aware in 2018, we had the Great Recession. Of course, there was in short term, a little bit price fall downs as a nature of the life cycle, the economical cycle, but it, re it reboosted very fast. And it has made significant performance until 2019. And we are seeing that during the pandemic times as well, it's performing very well in consideration to the other capital markets. Usually, this chart is like a heartbeat. And what are the new trends? What are the global investors and the local investors started to invest after the pandemic is also a very important question. Actually, it's the sustainable real estate. Is a sustainable real estate, and why are the people investing? Why is it so important? As you might be aware, it's a mega trend nowadays. The urbanization world is becoming increasingly more urbanized because since 2007, more than half of the population of the world is living in the cities. This also means that 70% of the global use of the energy and 60% of the global resources are being used by these cities because they are the economical power station for growth for the economies. And the World Organization is expecting 60% of the world population will be shifting to the cities in 2060. Meanwhile, in Germany, we have seven big metropoles and only 15% of the population is living in these cities. So 85% is living in the urban places. And we're expecting shifts in terms of population migrating to the big cities. So as individuals, because of the situations, experiences we have, we have to grow ourselves and we have to invest responsibly to leave our kids, the next generation, a future-proof um, cities with sustainable developments, which is providing superior living. So what is um, sustainable real estate providing in terms of a well-being? Provides better quality of life. It provides less lights, better reliability, low carbon footprints. So quality is life also is like the air quality as well. Also, it's the safety when your kids are able to walk to their schools um, without having a problem. And in part two, actually, I would like to um, show you a project which provides everything that I have explained with my colleagues in the previous slides, which is the Eden Tower. We see it as a great investment opportunity because it's one of the Europe's highest vertical gardens, besides its economical value. So Eden Tower, actually, I have a mini model over here, but it's not the small. It's 98 meters with 28 floors consisting of 263 apartments. And we are expecting the completion to be in the first quarter of 2022. The sizes are in between 30 square meter going up to 197 square meters. And the price ranges are in between 355,000 going up to 3.2 million. It's a very high end quality and the developer is a very sustainable developer as well. So um, before we go into the project, I would like to introduce you to um, Muriel Sam, who's joining us as a guest today. 
and she was from the development company Immobile as the head of business the, um, uh, head of business development in Luxembourg. Welcome, Miriel. Can you give us a bit of information about um, Immobile, please? Certainly. Um, thank you, Serkan. Immobile was created over 150 years ago by the King of Belgium, Leopold, in order to urbanize Brussels as Belgium's capital city. In order to raise money, um, he has created Immobile as a listed company in the Brussels Stock Exchange. Today, we are still listed and we are one of the oldest uh, listed companies on the Brussels Stock Exchange. And on top of that, we are a majority owned by one family, which makes us um, an entrepreneurial company with entrepreneurial values. Today, we are active in Belgium and in Luxembourg, and also in France and in Spain, and also in Poland and in Germany, which, make, which makes us a leading property developer in Europe. Um, so what are the current projects, uh, Miriel, at the moment that you're working on as Immobile? Uh, we have over 75 projects for a total of over 1.2 million square meters in development, of which about 80% is residential. Uh, we're relying on an extensive in-depth experience in residential development, uh, particularly condominiums. Thank you. So my last question would be, what was the strategy when you were planning Eden and what's it behind it? We intend to develop Eden as an iconic building located right in the heart of Frankfurt CBD. And we expect that the green facade is going to offer an outstanding quality of life to all residents. Well, um, thank you very much. So we have, it's a unique experience for me as well. I'm working with a company which was created by the King of Belgium. So I believe they have enough experience in urbanizing the cities and the buildings for sustainable and future living. Thank you very much. Um, it's a top developer. It's a reliable developer and they are bringing up a fantastic project at the moment in Frankfurt. What's unique about this project as terms of location and what it has in the surroundings? Actually, it's one of the last big residential development in the city center. Usually the high rise buildings are more for commercial uses. So you don't find residential towers in the middle of the city, which is next to the central banking districts, next to the trade fair, very close to the central station, to downtown and to the museum embankment. It's surrounded by dining, hotels, schools and daycare centers, top employers, service and retail providers, and also health and fitness centers with top transportation link. By car, you can reach to the central station in five minutes, to the trade exhibition center in five minutes, and to the banking um, district in five minutes. So it's a fantastic location. It's located in Europa Alley. Europa Alley is a boulevard which provides shops, shop employees, hotels, the biggest shopping mall, the Skyline Plaza, which is located opposite of this development, as you can see. So when you walk out of the door, you can actually reach 270 shops by two minutes walk. So this is a fantastic opportunity. Um, it has, as you can see, the vertical gardens, which is the tallest vertical garden is going to be one of Europe. And it has this stunning architecture, which was designed by Helmut Jan. Helmut Jan is a Chicago based architect, but he's German. He has designed the Messeturm in Frankfurt, if you have ever been there, the Sony Center in Berlin, the International Airport in Bangkok, the Hitachi Tower in Singapore. So um, you can see from the different angles his touch. He's, um, he's a li living legend, if you're into architecture. And this product gives you a future living because it's going to be just in the big city. That's one of the highest vertical gardens in Europe, which means there's going to be approximately 186,000 plants on this building, 20% of the facade. It contributes to the... Um, Logical balance, it improves the microclimate because it has acoustic and sound emissions um, and it has provide, it's going to provide a new quality of life. It's relaxing and calming environment. It provides um, longer durability. 
and it, it has a these reasons make an increase in the value of the property. Eden redefines the urban life. I would like to give some highlights with some visualizations. So this is how the interiors look in the building. It has impressive penthouses with view on skyline, Taunus mountain range. It has spacious living areas and floor to ceiling panorama windows, which provide in-depth light to the um, living space. It has private hideaways, balconies and lodges. It has a delightful ambience, high quality of fitted kitchens, and the kitchens are included in the building. Usually in the German tradition, the landlords are expecting um, like the tenants to put in the kitchen in the old tradition because they wanted to see, see the loyalty. But nowadays it's switching, I think, because of the international demand. So they're providing excellent quality of kitchen fitting. So you don't have to deal with it when you buy the property. It gives you a very warm welcome with the green uh, background and the reception, which provides 24 hours, seven days concierge services. It's very stylish. The private gym, you don't have to go out. You just get it in and work it out in your own communal area. It has communal green spaces, terraces, stunning views. This is important because if you buy a studio and um, if you want to invite your friends, you can always invite them here share this cozy environment, the wonderful view, have a couple of drinks, nice chat. And if we sum it up, even at a glance, it's an excellent location. It has the all amenities that you need, the perfect services. It's a green sustainable building designed by a world champ architect, and it has breathtaking views. But um, I'm an investment business and um, at the moment, you can see that the construction is on time. It's on the 16th level. But usually, the question I'm having is, so Serkan, what are the economical returns if we invest in this project? Well, it has stunning economical returns. And I would like to give you an example. If you invest in a one-bedroom apartment with a balcony consisting of 58 square meters, it will cost you about 585,500 euros. Um, in terms of mortgage, as an international buyer, usually the general practice is to get 50% loan to value mortgage, which is 292,750. And I will be focusing on later, but we have a monthly guaranteed rent from a top service provider. You will rent this apartment for 1,537 euros, and you will be paying 1,183 euros for your mortgage. This will provide you a monthly free cash flow, 350 euros, which will remain in your pockets. And you will get a gross initial yield of 3.15%. So I call it this way. I think if Eden was a bank, it would be one of the safest European bank giving you one of the best returns. Because if you put your money, your money's value would increase 10% and you would be getting 3.15% interest rate for 300,000 investments. We consider that the stock exchange, government bonds, and everything is collapsing, and there is not so many alternatives. I call this a price-proof asset. So um, the guaranteed income that we mentioned is we as GLL, uh, are in collaboration with the service providers due to the high demand, they're willing to rent the apartments in the same day that our clients are buying them. So the same day that you buy the apartment, you have a guaranteed 100% occupancy. Even if there is no suitable tenant, this company will be paying your rent and it will maximize your rental income and all the operating costs will be eliminated because usually the tenants deal with these tasks. So to sum up why Germany is a crisis-proof market, it's a resilient market, top performer. Frankfurt has always been the top investor's choice. It's a top location due to the high demand for living space. Eden is the last residential high-rise in Frankfurt center. And um, it provides a sustainable living with all the amenities. You are investing through an um, international leading developer um, who has been listed 
for 150 years and you are getting a guaranteed income with a top service provider. So before I pass to the live Q&A, please um, be aware that after this we'll have the live Q&A so you can prepare your questions um, while you are listening to us. I will be um, introducing to my colleagues so that we have an insight how to buy and finance real estate in Germany. So, Volker, thank you very much for joining us today. Can you please introduce a little bit yourself and explain us as a professional the buying process in Germany? Hello, Zerkan. Yes, thank you very much for having me. Um, my name is Volker Mauch. I'm a founding partner of BPMK Attorneys. We are a law firm um, with, um, with offices in Berlin and in Stuttgart. We exist since more than 20 years and our focus is on private international clients with all their needs. My personal focus is private international real estate investors and we provide services for international clients with their specific needs. Um, we as a team of um, seven employees and two attorneys working for private internationals who want to buy apartments in Germany to have a part of the really booming real estate market in Germany. You can find some information about the team and what we do on our website, vpmk.com. Um, and I will now try to explain a little bit how the procedure for a purchase usually goes and alongside explain our services, which um, is a full service to cover you from a to Z of a, a real estate acquisition. So um, the slide that you see here shows that the purchase process begins, of course, with picking your property and reserving it with JLL. So you sign a reservation form with them and pay a reservation fee. That is the one and two on this slide. And then before number three, that's usually when we as attorneys come in. So um, one of the things that we do is that we so, um, we need a power of attorney to represent you at the signing of the contract. To explain that a little bit, if you buy real estate in Germany, you have to go to a notary and sign the purchase contract in front of the notary after he has read the whole thing in German to both parties. Of course, for most of our clients, don't speak German, don't live in Germany, they don't want to come to Germany for that. So we represent them. To represent them at the notary appointment, we need a power of attorney that is signed at a German consulate, a German embassy. Um, we can also get it signed at um, notaries in your country with a, a couple of additional requirements. We will guide you through this process. So it's gonna be very easy, one-stop thing for you. Um, and you will have always some contact with us who speaks your language to be able to guide you through this. Uh, the other thing that we do is that we um, are in contact also with your mortgage broker because you will at the same time be in contact with Osman if you want to finance the property and we will provide the documents for the um, property that he will need and at the same time we will provide a trust account that can be used for all money transfers to Germany. That is something that's important for Osman. He will explain it a bit more in detail later. The other thing that needs to be done, the third thing that needs to be done before the contract is signed is, of course, the legal due diligence. That means we will send you an explanation of the purchase contract, how it works, what's the content, point out certain things that may be important for you, ask you questions. So there will be a few emails regarding that, and we need your reply to that. So once these three things are in place, the power of attorney, the financing and the uh, legal due diligence ag agreed by you. Then we make an appointment at the notary. And then when everything is okay for you, we will sign the contract on your behalf. And then you have a binding purchase contract for the property. Um, what distinguishes us a little bit from uh, most other law firms is that we offer full service packages. That means for us, the mandate doesn't end here. This is just halfway. We will from there on accompany you throughout the whole purchase process. That means in practice, there will be invoices coming in from tax authorities, um, notary and so forth. We will check them, of course, but also the developer will send invoices alongside the construction process. So the system in Germany is that the developer provides something like, for example, the raw construction of the building, and then he sends an invoice for that. And we will check this invoice, whether it's okay, whether the securities have been given so that you are safe 
And then we will say, okay, please pay it. Or we can we contact the bank if you have a mortgage and say, please pay the asset, to pay this, this part of the loan out to the um, developer. And then in the end, when the building is completed, we also guide you through the acceptance period, um, through the acceptance meetings and through the handover and then make sure that the, con that the keys get either to you or to the um, administrator like Urban Ground um, that Serkan mentioned before. We just take care that you don't have to do anything uh, to come here and, and take care of. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any further questions, please feel free to ask us. Um, oh yeah, one thing I forgot, of course, when you have a mortgage, you will we will need to um, give a security in the property for your bank. That is again, something that has to be done at the notary. We will also take care of that. That's part of our service, of course. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Volker. Actually, you are making our investors' lives much easier due to the high regulations, which is for the safety of the investors. So, um, Osman, how to finance real estate in Germany? Welcome to the panel and thank you very much for joining. Can you give us an insight as an expert about how to finance real estate in Germany? My name is Osman Ye. I'm a mortgage broker based in Bonn, Germany. I've been working as a mortgage broker since the last eight years, assisting uh, international clients like yourself predominantly. Uh, within the last eight years, I would say I've been uh, in touch or in quite close relations uh, with GLL and I've also interacted with uh, BPMK. Uh, the legal firm, and today, of course, I'm quite happy to be associated with uh, Imobel. Um, to the first point, entry barriers for foreigners. Um, actually, there are no entry barriers, so basically that question can be answered very simple. No, there are no entry barriers. Of course, you can purchase properties in Germany, and you can also apply for loans in Germany. Um, my job is to make it as simple as possible for you. So. Our first interaction would be when uh, you have selected a property and you would like to understand the numbers and understand if you can get a loan on it. We would have a brief phone call where I would introduce the terms and conditions, your obligations towards the bank, the bank's obligations towards you. And uh, if you're satisfied with everything, the next step would be to collect all the necessary documents. So the only part where you will play a major role is to provide your personal documents that would be your passport copy, capital statement, income statement. And of course, uh, we need to show that you do have a bank account in Germany. If you don't have a bank account, that's where BPMK plays a major role. They would uh, provide you with uh, yeah, a trust account, which I uh, personally find extremely good and makes my life quite easy. Uh, with that trust account, we can simply proceed and uh, apply for the loan. When we now apply for the loan, it would take roughly around uh, two weeks in order to get the confirmation from the bank. When we receive this confirmation from the bank, my job would be to inform you, first of all, inform uh, GRL as well as your solicitor so they can take the necessary steps. One of uh, the sets of the documents you will receive is the securitization of the loan, which would be important for your solicitor in order to go ahead and uh, set up the mortgage agreement. Uh, my job is, uh, is to make it as simple as possible for you. So we will try to take care of all the paperwork and all the communication so that you can simply just uh, lean back, relax, and uh, yeah, have your property uh, ultimately. Um, when we discuss about low interest rates, uh, you've seen the slide that Serkan has already presented initially, uh, where you showed how high your rental guarantee would be, as well as uh, how high the interest rates would be or the mortgage payment towards the bank. There we've calculated with the maximum interest rate a German bank would provide. So uh, in any case, um, it can only be better for you. So which means your gross yield would be definitely higher than the percentage that has been uh, shown before. Um, it's a safe system. What makes it safe? The communication between the different parties, myself as a mortgage broker, your solicitor, VPMK, um, as well as the notary who's uh, secretary, securing the purchase and GRL would make it actually a safe and I'd say easy to run procedure for you um, in order to uh, purchase your pro uh, property. I would say from this point, I'm sure you would have uh, questions afterwards. If you do have any specific questions, please feel free to get in touch with me at the Q&A. I'll be happy to answer 
all your questions. That's it from my side. <laughs> Thank you very much, Osman. Osman will make sure that you can leverage your money um, to a German bank. And um, we have been very successful with him in our past transactions. So I'm looking forward to it. So before we um, pass to the questions, I would like to thank everybody and pass it to Nazem to have the questions. And I will be ready here in terms of answering your questions if you've got any. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much for the interesting presentation for each our panel from each of our panelists. So we are get, getting your questions. Uh, just to remind, so please click the question mark button until it becomes blue, and you can type in your questions in there. Okay, so there's a lot of questions that are coming in. So we'll try to answer which one we can during this time frame. Okay, the first one I see here, uh, this one would be directed to Mr. Osman. Mr. Osman, which banks are financing at this moment? <laughs> yes, which banks are financing? Uh, there are quite a few banks, not only banks, but also pension funds. Uh, we also have insurers who could finance such a property. So uh, depending where you are located uh, in around the world, uh, which property you're buying uh, in, in Germany, we would have to determine which banks are out there. Um, to name one or two banks, let me just say uh, DSL Bank can offer loans. You have banks such as, uh, as a pension provider, DZN. So there are definitely banks out here who can offer uh, loans. Yeah. Just to step in, I think uh, it might be also interesting to say it's the German banks and the German companies and the German institutions which are financing. Yeah, sure, definitely. It must be a German bank. Um, I do not deal with banks that are based abroad, so it will be a German institution. Yeah. Okay. And what kind of documents is required for this application? Uh, from the client? Uh, from the client, it's actually quite simple. Uh, I would say if you can provide your passport copy ID, uh, if you can provide a capital statement showing that you do have the funds to cover the down payments, uh, your income statement is also very important, um, as well as a, a bank account. As I mentioned, you can also have a trust account. Um, of course, it gets we require certain more documents if you are somehow already engaged in Germany. Like for example, you have an existing property, then I'll, I'll definitely get in touch with you and let you know exactly what uh, additional documents we need. Okay, okay, and this one here. Who, this one here is directed to Mr. Sarkhan, who will assist uh, with the rent management, is GAL partnering with any agencies? Hello? Nazim, can you repeat it again? I'm sorry, the voice has gone a little bit. I couldn't understand clearly. Okay, no worries. Who will assist us in the rent management? Is JL partnering with an agency? Yes, um, we are actually integrating our investors with the service providers. We introduce them and they take it over from there and they speak English, German, Italian. So they provide the services by themselves and they inform us so that we know what is our investor situation is. Okay, okay. And as most of the tenants like the flat to be uh, finished because I think this is coming from an investor who is used to UK. So for German property, is it going to be similar? I mean, some of the uh, service providers are uh, providing the furniture, like Urban Ground is also providing furniture. Um, it depends what kind of furniture um, you want. Of course, if it's a design one, then they might charge it. But um, the service providers, especially for the band, one bedrooms, are providing the furniture. All right, all right. And this one is about tax. I think, Mr. Volker, you might want to answer this one. So the tax, how is it like? <laughs> okay, well, that's that's pretty broad. Um, <laughs> you can start with probably like the capital, you know. Capital yeah. tax I mean, there's, okay, I think I'll quickly go through, um, I think, three main taxes, stamp duty, um, capital gains, and ongoing income. 
So stamp duty is a one-time tax um, of 6% in Frankfurt, will be paid once, will be paid by the next buyer when you sell the property. So it's a one-off thing. Um, then there is um, on your, if you make a profit from the rental, uh, that would be taxable in Germany according to the double taxation treaties also. Um, but the, the situation and, and that tax is income tax. So it's a progressive tax rate 14, 45%, somewhere in between that. But the good news is that you usually have a very small amount that needs to be taxed because after you calculate the profit, what you would consider your profit, so the, the, what the income is over the expenses, you can still deduct some additional costs. And one of them is, for example, the interest of the loan, which um, usually is about, um, brings brings the the, the taxable income down by by from 3% to 2%, for example, or 3.5 to 2.5. And then you can also deduct the um, depreciation. So the building value of the development can be written off with 2% of it every year. So that usually brings down the um, taxable yield from, as I just said, 2.5% to down to 1%. So you actually you have a yield of 3.5%, but you actually only have to pay taxes on this 1%. And then the tax on that is the progressive tax rates. So you even profit there from the lower tax rate because you have a lower taxable amount. And then the last tax, I think, which most people are interested in, which I think is very interesting in Germany, that is the capital gains tax, as it's called in the UK. Um, in Germany, that is also income tax. So profit on the sale from a real estate is also income in Germany. But there are two very interesting tax exemptions, full tax exemptions for real estate. One of them is if you own the property since 10 years, that means starting from the signing of the purchase contract. So the two years of construction fully count into these 10 years. If you have that for 10 years as a private owner, you do not have to pay any taxes on the profit. Yeah, completely tax-free. That's actually what most Germans and most foreigners are doing in Germany. They keep their property for 10 years and then they sell it and they have to, don't have to pay a single cent in taxes. And the other possibility is if you want to sell it before, if you live in the property yourself for about two and a half years or your children live in the property, then you also can sell it tax-free. Uh, you don't have to you don't have to pay any taxes on on the profit that you make with that under this condition. Okay. Those are the three main ones, I would say. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Okay, so I think this next question is to Mr. Osman. Okay, so what kind of uh, interest rates can they expect for you know this property for the mortgages over there? Okay. Uh, depending with which uh, bank we ultimately work with, uh, we will then find out what kind of interest rates uh, are to be expected. If you look back at the calculation we had earlier on the slide, uh, there we were working with an interest rate of 2.85% uh, on a loan amount of, uh, say, 50%. And that was like, I think that was 279, if I recall. Um, so, which means 50% LTV, we have a loan uh, interest rate of 285 and that's the highest. So um, if we're looking into other banks now, we can even reach up to an interest rate, I'll say currently of 1.5%. So it depends which bank we're ultimately dealing with and uh, what the bank's uh, admissions uh, uh, require, I would say. So, um, and again, it's always changing from month to month or from week to week. So if you somehow apply for a loan today uh, in comparison to in a week, um, in the future, it might be different. So it always depends. But the maximum would be definitely 2.85. I don't think it's going to increase or be higher than that. Just to mention, this is a 10 year fixed rate. Yes, yes. yes. It, is, it is a 10 year fixed rate, which means within this entire 10 years, your interest is fixed. It doesn't change at any time. Of course, you can apply for a different uh, five years or 15 years fixed interest duration. But in many cases, we have, or in actually almost all cases, clients prefer uh, a 10 years fixed interest duration. Yeah. Um, also, I would like to mention in that calculation that the rent is um, net. So the maintenance fees and every cost will be paid by the tenant, which is urban ground in that case. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 
Okay, I think we have a lot of international purchases here. Uh, most of them is from Southeast Asia. So this is for Mr. Volker. Is it required to visit Germany in order to finance, finalize this transaction? Uh, well, no, that's the, that's the point of our, that's one of the main goals of our service that we spare the clients that they have to come to Germany and they have to deal with German language. So you don't, you don't need to come if you have uh, us representing you at the notary appointment um, and for the financing, you can also get, get around having a German account and coming to Germany for that. Um, if you, if you have, if you use our services, because we provide this trust account for each client, which actually is more idea of providing protection to the clients, but it also is a big um, advantage when we deal with the banks. So they don't, to short, they don't have to come to Germany. All right, thank you, Mr. Volker. And for Mr. Osman, this question is for you. Uh, is it possible to use existing property in Germany as a collateral? Answer your question. Let me just emphasize on what Mr. Volker said. I find it extremely interesting what BPMK is offering with that trust account because uh, I, it is quite unique. Um, I do not know of any other uh, yeah, legal firms that do provide such a trust account. So um, I think it's perfect. It also makes my life uh, much easier. Now to your question. Um, existing properties, uh, that's a good question. Existing properties do make or play a, a great role when uh, buying new properties. Now it's always a question, uh, is that property uh, attached to any liability, yes or no? If there's no liability or, or the liability is maximum 20%, then it might be interesting to use that existing property in order as a collateral in order to uh, purchase the, uh, the next uh, property. What is also good, and that it has happened several of times, uh, buyers would simply just use their properties or refinance the existing property and would use that refinancing funds in order to buy a new property. So the new property would basically bought cashless. No, and also the transaction costs in some cases can also be covered by uh, the new, the, the, the funds collected out of the existing property. So it does help, yes, definitely. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Osman. I think this one is for you as well. I, it seems we have a couple of British uh, participants as well. They'd like to know if they earn in pounds, uh, is the LTV the same for them as well, or for all uh, for, for the LTV, yeah, percentage wise? Question: I would say, uh, I, I, do not misunderstand me. I don't know if that's luck or not, but because of the Brexit, you are now eligible <laughs> to apply for loans in Germany. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if it wasn't the Brexit, then it would be it would have been difficult. But now the situation looks like because of this Brexit you do have options to apply for a loan in Germany. And um, yes, you can apply for loans if you earn in pounds, yeah. All right. Maybe I should indicate one thing here. I'm sorry to step in, but we should also maybe indicate that in Germany, usually the property income counts rather than the individual income. Individual income is like more, more like a collateral. If they have a strong currency like pounds, uh, Swiss franc, um, US dollars or Euro, then it's much easier for the German banks, of course, um, because they feel more comfortable. Yes, that's true. That's very true. Uh, but also, I think the question in regards to the pounds is also a good question, because if you see countries like Denmark, they have Danish Krona, etc., or uh, I think yeah. Romania. So those are countries who are exempted, even though they are in Europe. Um, I would say maybe just to give, the, give a broader answer, for countries which are not based in Europe and you do earn in a different currency than euros, you are also eligible to apply for a loan in Germany. So this question is actually quite good because the UK is, is, is in the European economic area and uh, the pounds were in, in the past exempted, but now today uh, it is possible for you earning in pounds to apply for a loan, yeah. All right, thank you very much. And I think this one would be for you, Mr. Volker. Would there be any restrictions for foreign buyers when purchasing real estate? You know, for example, like some countries need you to stay in the country for a certain number of uh, weeks, and some countries need, need you to sell it to only the local, uh, local market. Does it apply in Germany? 
Yeah, I heard that. I think Australia is doing that, right? Um, no, in Germany, there are no such restrictions. There are neither restrictions when you come into the market, so you can purchase any property you want. There are no restrictions that foreigners can only buy specific projects. Um, they can buy every property that a German could also buy. And also when selling, they can sell to everybody. So you don't have to be worried that there's any kind of limited buyer uh, group when you want to resell it after 10 years or whenever. Um, there's no restriction on to whom you can sell it. Yeah. Okay, okay. And this is, uh, I think, for Mr. Sarkhan. How long does the rental guarantee stand for? This is minimum of four years. You can extend it. It's a revolving contract. But I don't think that anybody will have any problem in terms of renting due to the vacancy rates. Maybe I can give you some examples. Um, we've seen in the market in some cities like Frankfurt and Berlin that um, when a um, landlord is putting a rental to an advert, sometimes we've seen 1,800 people wanted to visit the rental apartment. So um, due to the high demand, you always have the service providers if you want to continue with the existing one, of course you can. So this is more based four to 10 years because of the capital gain tax and um, maximum they do it 10 years in case the investor wants to sell it tax-free afterwards. Okay, okay. Uh, and then Mr. Osman, I think uh, this is uh, pertaining to the one from the UK. Uh, he wants to know like, what's the maximum LTV if it's earning based in the UK? Um, well, the maximum LTV doesn't have to do with the earnings base in the UK. First, I mean, your earnings are secondary, okay? So it's, it has nothing to do with the earnings base in the UK. It basically has to do with the funds or the earnings which have been generated in Germany or which are, which you generate somehow in Germany or in the EU. Uh, so your UK earnings are secondary, that's it. Uh, I would say the LTV can reach from 50%. It can also go up to 70%, of course. And if you do have additional, uh, uh, an additional property which you want to use as a collateral, it can even exceed uh, 100%. So um, I cannot answer that question specifically without knowing your situation. I can answer 50% yes, 70% yes, 100% above also yes. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. And then for Mr. Sarkhan, on the exit, so does local buy all these flats with a capital appreciation later down the line? Yes, of course, because Germany has a high income in terms of GDP and the people are earning good monies at the moment. So uh, in the past, um, they were not buying as they used to now. That's why if you look to Berlin, for example, the, uh, the ownership ratio is less than 20%, but it's increasing more and more. If you look at Germany in general, it's around 50%. If you look at Eden, I would say half of them are German buyers because uh, approximately 50% of this project is sold. And uh, the mix is like 50 to 60% locals and the remaining ones are international buyers. All right, all right. Okay, I think uh, just to reiterate for Mr. Sarkhan, can you repeat what's the price, the minimum price for the apartment in Eden? It's 355,000 euros approximately. And mm -hmm. also because there are some uh, uh, British guests over here, this is a freehold tenure. So um, mm -hmm. on this place actually. And um, yeah. Okay, freehold, 355,000 euros. And when is the entry price? Yes. That's the best, best entry you can price. Buy multi units as well if you would like to build yourself a portfolio then you can even negotiate the rental income with that service provider. It's business in the end. Great, great, great. And when is the completion date for this one? Um, well, they're on time in terms of construction. As I have mentioned, they're on the 16th floor out of the 28th, and it's expected to complete in the first quarter of 2022. All right, all right. Okay. I think in Germany, they cannot give a specific date because um, they can be... Um, anything related with the government or with the bureaucracy. So they give a range and we say the first quarter of 2022. Okay, okay. So I think we're running out of time. Um, so if you have specific, specific questions, 
we can get you appointed with a specific panelist if you have more questions in terms of tax taxes or financing um, I think we we take care of a lot of the questions already so if you are from uh, Singapore or Indonesia you can contact Ms. Widya if you're from Malaysia you can contact Ms. Christine Wong if you're from Thailand you can contact Ms. Jita Mas and if you're coming to Germany you can always contact Mr. Sir Khan my pleasure <laughs> or any of our panelists so do contact each of your each of your representative in each country for more specific questions so apologies if you can't answer all of them but i think most of it uh, is uh, is taken care of so with that uh, good good evening everyone thank you again for coming to this webinar and have a good evening <laughs>